Surprise, Derek has died. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you want to point out real quick. I really need to point something out real quick. I'm so used to this shit, I take my headset off every time we start. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You'll hear it in post. So, <laughs> you'll you'll hear it in death. All right. uh, we should probably let Silver explain. Okay. So yeah. as the title on the scene yeah. says, welcome to episode five, sort of. Unfortunately, in our recording for episode five, there was a bug in the OBS settings that it only recorded the Dia mic. So we couldn't really post it. So we talked it over and to try to make it up to allow people to come along with the journey with us. Anyone who's interested or enjoying the story, we decided to meet up on a later date and sit around, talk about what happened, try to explain events, share character insights, etc. to do our best to try to bring people along. We know we can't recreate the session or what happened, so we're not going to try to do that. But we will do our best to try to make people feel left out as little as possible. Yeah. yeah. This is welcome episode to, five the behind the scenes. Mark Paul said. Welcome to the Joe Rogan podcast, everybody. We're talking about Jesus Digimon Christ. today. <laughs> this is behind the scenes. Welcome, welcome. This is your I VIP think, pass. I think just in case we should go ahead and just say it. Luckily, we at least had no Digivolution this time. The good yeah. news we is did not. nobody missed a Digivolution. The bad news, it was both a very lore and character development oriented session. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You guys missed a hot spring that we never yeah. use. The, the Digivolution I mean, was the trauma we made along the way. <laughs> the Digivolution were the files we opened along the way. <laughs> Jack and Cassie gave oh, Jay, yeah. Jay, Jay, Jack and Cassie gave Derek a swirly. Uh, yeah. Let's try to start at the beginning, guys, and take things events yeah. one by one. Yeah. Right. Yep. Right. First things first, the files. Yes. So, at the start of the session, uh, I've brought us over to the screen that is inside the control spire. Uh, I made a footnote documents of things shortly after the session to things to try to go through. So the first thing that happened when the session started is we went over the party loop for what was recovered from the fight against the glitch entity in the Garchomon. So, uh, Jack and Shamamon got 200 bits and a wonder chip. Uh, Derek and Black Algamon got 200 bits and a wonder chip. And Cassian and Kazuman got a stun chip, a sleep chip, and a modify card overclock. We specified that with digital items, chips are equipable items. A Digimon can have up to two chips equipped at a time. Discs are recovery items. Uh... Data ROMs are single use items to teach or learn technique, and modify cards are single use items to either grant temporary abilities or boost current abilities. So, what the wonder chips they receive to you is when equipped, they add plus to one stat. Um, the stun and sleep chips give immunity to those conditions, uh, and the overclock card is a single-use item that, when used, will add plus two to all rolls temporarily. Uh, do you guys want to say how you used your items? I uh, I equipped both the chips to Gazimon, so now he's immune to both stun and sleep. Akumon uh, has it in his, in his attack stat, so he now has a plus two to his attack. The, the nanosecond I realized, uh, I was told what this was, I immediately slapped it onto agility. Mm -hmm. Fast as fuck. He's fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> Rolling You're around right. at the speed of sound. So now Shalomon is at a plus four in agility. <laughs> okay, so so basically the dynamic there is Shalomon is just built for speed, while 
while Agumon is built for speed and also just damage. Yeah. yeah. Agumon is DPS. After sorting through this, while Cassie was continuing to look through the computer, uh, the two Gardramon they fought started to wake up. Um, and the group had many questions for the Gardramon. I'll be honest, at first I was worried they were going to attack us again. <laughs> <laughs> the Gardramon we questions. were equally confused. Uh, their first response is, upon looking at the group, was asking if they were admins. They then said, wait, no, last time we checked, there were only three active admins. Then are you perchance uh, representatives from Equilibrium? And then the people were like, the fuck is that? <laughs> it was revealed that the admins were the humans you had uh, the authority and power to oversee the towers and try to keep uh, the balance, whatever that means. And I think the group never got around to digging into what equilibrium was. Oh yeah, no, we didn't. No, I, I believe I believe Derek was going to ask, but then they were like, "No." Then we were like, "Nope." We got ADHD on the mind. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and to be fair, a lot was happening. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, uh, at, it was at that point Jack was dying of He wasn't able to say anything. <laughs> They, the Gardramon also asked where Mamimon was. Apparently, he is the Digimon who was in charge of overseeing this tower, and they revealed that each control spire was entrusted to be overseen by an ultimate level Digimon. To which and then. Jason, oh, go ahead. And Jason found out he could search Digimon. Yes. Uh, Jason did manage to find a way to search up Mamimon by name in his Digivice. And, uh, also, uh, the group then started asking questions about when Ultimate Digimon was and Digimon levels and had all that explained to them as well. Um, as the conversation died down, Kasten began looking, continued looking into the files on the computer. Um, as we said before, there was a series of logs over the last a history of what had gone through the system. Uh, the most recent thing to go through the system before it set down was some program called the DigiDestined Protocol. Uh, before that were various uh, quick travel and scan logs of uh, scanning the system, scanning different regions. Uh, as Cassian spent more time looking and going over this, you notice that almost all of the recent entries were done by the admin logged in as Sentinel. Um, every once in a while was something by an admin known as Eclipse sprinkled in sparingly. As he scrolled back a bit, uh, he was looking for any changes in regularity and he saw that uh, after a while of going back, the scan logs became less frequent, and both admins, uh, Eclipse and Diana, appeared in about an equal portion to Sentinel instead of being dominantly Sentinel's uh, commands or logins. Um, do you guys have any thoughts or that you wanted to share about that? Uh, besides, uh, like, uh, like, who the hell is Sentinel? Or Eclipse? Well, it's or some, well, it seems that, like, at some point, Sentinel was aware of something going on in the server that I don't think he took over, like, by force. I think he didn't have a choice but to take over because I would assume something happened to the other admins that would prompt him to take more of an initiative in, in the logs or or he 
got jealous or something like that and took over the force. But then now, how would he explain using the program? Fair point. Never mind. Or, 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 he was finding, trying to find something. Well, he, well we, we know from the back, I know that the characters don't know this, but we know from the sort of intro session in, in episode one that he was being hunted or something was protecting the protocol. So I don't think he's totally evil, but there's definitely suspicion around him. I, I have uh, Jason, uh, not Jason, I have maybe another admin for evil. I guess. Yeah. What are your well, in-character thoughts on this? They're like, why us? Are we special? What the fuck? Yeah, uh, Jason's just as confused as Derek. I think, I think based on, if, if they were clearly like selecting them, it was clear that they all had the common trait of being Oh, we haven't gotten to the, the finals movie. yet. Oh, we right. Yes. I think by that point, okay, then by that point, He's also wondering about the other admins. Uh, I think they were Tempest and... Yes, so as Cassian spent more time digging in, he eventually found other admin names after spending a while back. Uh, the most recent other besides the three was Tempest, and then he eventually found Falcon, and that's where he stopped scrolling back. So it took him a long time scrolling through logs to even get to that point. Um, they also found about about the tower network system. So the control spires are set up not as individual entities, but they all consist as one network with each other. They work together as one computer to share data, and the data they share is split up and stored between them rather than being backed up on each server. Uh, they also found a map of the region of Mainframe. Uh, they are down here in the network jungle. Well, to the north is both the Bandwidth Desert, the Static Snows, and further above that is the Recycle Mountains, each marked with their own control spire. Uh, both the towers in Bandwidth Desert and Static Snows are offline. Well, the one in the Recycle Mountains is online but function in a way but functioning on a completely different network uh, i'll put in the chat what that is but it's effectively corrupter uh slash backslash backslash xc 34k9 bp9 possessor beta mark 2.4 is the system or program that the tower in the recycle mountain seems to be running on they also noticed that both the towers in the Bandwidth Desert and the Static Snow as well offline were resonating with the mountain and the Recycle Mountain Tower and the Recycle Mountains, almost as if they were functioning like signal boosters. <sighs> At this point, uh the group decided to split up. Uh, several members of the group went down, uh, were led by the Gardramon to down to the medic bay. The elevator and all the tower's functions were fully online now that the tower had been brought back online. Uh, searching around, they found some recovery items that they used to rest up from the fight, and many of them took their rests down there. Uh, Meanwhile, uh, uh, Cassian and Derek spent a little bit more time looking over files, and they found, well, that the air foe overseer had disappeared once the fight had ended. They found something referred to as the Overseer Shield Program. Uh, Cassian, do you want to describe what happened? What do you found that? That is beautiful. <laughs> Okay, then I'll go ahead and describe. Uh, Wait, hold no, on, I, I was can't. eating. I was not <laughs> eating, so I slightly wasn't paying attention. I had pizza from last class, so... I asked if you wanted to describe what happened when you found the file named the Overseer Shield Program. So, the 
Wondering what the, the hell that was, he said, huh, let's, let's put my phone up to it and see what happens. Turns out, uh, he, basically, it's a, it's a temporary, te it's a temporary shield that they have, and it's like, and like, it's like, oh, and like, can more than one person download it? Derek came in, he had it too. Then Derek had, um, the bright idea to, uh, be the test dummy. Wait. So Cassian punched him as hard as he could, and, and yes, the shield did work. By the way, this was one of the 11 ones we had this session. Yep. The 11 what? Oh, yeah. We had 11 ones this session. And none of them were by oh, me! Yeah. That's a lie. <laughs> that is a whole It's lie. Mm -hmm. I can go back and check. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, yes, the group, uh, well, they all didn't get it at the same time, but at the end of the session, everybody in the group had a level one shield, which ha means yep. they have a shield with one charge, which means that when they would take damage, they lose a charge from the shield instead. It's not an HP system. It is a each charge blocks damage, one source of damage. Um. Mm -hmm. And the shields do regenerate when they take a long rest. Uh, Jack, meanwhile, uh, went down to the floor that nobody had gone to yet, which was the digital Digimon maintenance or the Digimon staying quarters. And uh, do you want me to describe, or would you like to describe that, Ned? Uh, well, Jack, uh, going into the room, uh, he was able to determine that... There was a, uh, there was clearly some sort of struggle or an outright fight. Uh, he saw a table that was turned over that nearby it, some food went really bad. Um, he looked around, a lot of things were damaged and it looked like a, uh, like an engineering, a lot of machines and all that. And the machines were very much destroyed. Uh, Jack wasn't really able to find anything except for three bolts that looked like they were from uh, a guard room. Yeah. But that's really all he found. Now, earlier, Cassian had tried digging more into the files on the Digidestin protocol, which was a DC-20 check. I believe that was a one or a two that he'd rolled on that. No, uh, I think, hold on, let me check. No, I think it was a three. <laughs> let me double check that. <laughs> anyway. It was a terrible. Anyway. Uh, since the, oh, you're right. I think it was a three because it was a seven. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because I, yeah, I had a plus four. So yeah, it was a so three you're four right. It was a four. Three. Yeah, because, because Derek tried helping you. No, yes. it's because, no, well, I have a plus four tech check regardless. Yeah, yeah, it was a seven, and then it got the plus four from Derek's assistant, so it was an 11. So total. it was a, technically an 11. But, uh, I had decided since Cassian was spending more time looking through the files, since looking and getting access to the files on computer, he'd originally gotten a 21 on a DC, DC 10 check. I said, well, he did realize earlier that this would be easier with more towers online. Effectively, uh, for every tower that was online, the DC would go down by five. I would allow him a second check at it right now uh, as part of his earlier explosion and passing the DC by quite a bit. Uh, to which Cassian exploded for an 18 and he had exactly two adversity points on him at this point. Wait, was this before? Wait, was this before uh, he left and Derek tried looking to see if there were security cameras in yes. the yeah, well, this was all tower? Uh, no, okay. I think this was after that. Because oh. yes, Derek, because you had gone down to meet Jack. Up with was... Oh yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Because Jack was there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Jack was there when that happened. Yeah. Yeah, so Cassian had gone down to meet up with Jack to try to search around more. Uh, 
Well, Cass, well, Derek tried looking for security files to see what happened, seeing scientific prior struggle in the ops room. But he could not get access uh, to anything. Don't forget Do you guys want to talk uh, about your, the conversation you had in the elevator on the way up here? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, Derek, you were saying something? Don't forget uh, when uh, they went back up to have uh, Jack get his shield. He, uh, he wanted to test it out, so he punched Derek. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when they and got he, back he up said there. Even if he even if I didn't punch him before, he still would have done it. Yes. I would, yeah. still would have done it. <laughs> so Jack completely decked uh, Derek as soon as he got upstairs to test the shield that your Derek had. <laughs> but the shield was already depleted at this point. So Derek <laughs> dropped like a ragdoll. <laughs> All <laughs> like an omelet, scramble like an egg. Uh, but did, did you guys want to share anything about that conversation the two of you had going up in the elevator? No, oh, just... I'm trying to recall. Castor like. did drop something about his backstory. I did. Uh, uh, yeah, Cassie definitely did. Uh, Jack was a little... Uh, yeah, Jack he. was a little... Um, yeah, he... She definitely wasn't really uh, trying to reveal too much. Yeah, both Cassie and Jack were in a bit of a funk at this point over their lack of control over the situation. Cassian, yeah. what did so you I, say about I did, yourself? I did drop that I came that I did come from a criminal family. That's I believe all I all I dropped. Yes, you mentioned that you come from a family of organized crime. Yep, and. Uh, I get Jack was not going to reveal much, but uh, that would happen later. And by later, later in the session, would... <gasps> much got yeah. revealed about many people later <laughs> in the session. Yeah. One would say almost yeah, imminently. <laughs> and then almost. Jack decided to drop that information to Derek by accident. And, like, and Derek's like, no, that makes sense. No. Yeah, Jack let it slip to Derek. Derek's like, that makes sense, and started elaborating on how he thought that made sense, which made Cassian very, very upset. <laughs> he did make Cassian very that upset. That is one of Cassian's sore spots, and Derek kept digging into it. I think Derek got this for early. See, you see, earlier in this talk, we did mention a swirly. You're going to see why that was justified. <laughs> <laughs> so, th this is the point where I allowed Cassian to make that second check. And he rolled, exploded for that 18 and had exactly two adversity points. And so, several monitors throughout the room played the lion. All of them coming up with this prompt after prompt. Air. Uh, encryption breached. Error. Backup data lost. Error. Data fragmented. Error. Error. Data, data failed to be stored. Error. M most of uh, most of data lost. Error. Data failed to be found. Compiling remaining fragmented data into partial files. And 12 files appeared on the screen. The first file is named Jackson Ashton. File two, Neil Hartley. File three, Cassian Omnon. File four, Jason Derritz. File five, Derek Blatehart. File six, Shaman. File seven, Al Ralman. File eight, Gazimon. File nine, Kunamon. File ten, Black Agamon. And the remaining two files were both glitched out and grayed out. And quick, there was not enough data present to open the files or see what was in them. A lot of things started to go down at this point. Uh, the first thing Cassian looked at, I was think, was... Uh, I looked at I I you know looked at Gazimon's file. I first. do I know I did all the humans first, then I did all the Gazimon. I do have the order, so I screenshot okay. it, and I can go by the order. Okay. So to give you the order of humans, so I did, so I did Cassian, then Gazimon, okay. and then 
So, and oh, then oh. I did, I'll tell you the human. So okay. Cassian, Gazimon, Jackson was next. Third okay. was Derek. Fourth was Neil. And fifth was Jason. So let's go over what was in those files. First, let me pull up Cassian's file for you. <laughs> file Cassian Omnon. Cassian Omnon. Male, age 23. Strength, reasoning. Prior connection to the digital world. Trauma. Criminal activity. Military. Leadership experience. Freedom. Cassian. What happened when you read this file? He burst it out into insane laughter, knowing, realizing that they were being tracked. They fucking knew. They were handpicked. Wasn't just They're some coincidence. They were selected. Yeah, that, and they that, knew. When he pulled up Kazimon's file, he found the same information that shows up when he scans Kazimon on his digivice. Um, so then he continued going through the human files, which, you, uh, Jack's file was next, correct? Uh, Jack's was next. All right. Jackson Ashton, male, age 21, strength, ambition, prior connection to the digital world, criminal activity, incarceration, resourceful, hardworking, redemption. I open Derek's. Then we go into Derek's file. After much discussion yeah. on Jackson's incarceration. Yep. <laughs> Derek Bladehart, male, age 20. Strength, creativity, prior connection to the digital world, multiple visits to digital world, trauma, moved, relocated, outsider, diverse interests. There was a lot of discussion on this file between you three. Uh -huh. <laughs> Including the, uh, the multiple <laughs> visits. <laughs> Special. Derek had no idea. De Derek, De De well, well, much will be revealed later. Derek had no idea. Next up was Neil. more trauma. Yeah, Neil more Hartley, trauma. male, Yay. age 20, strength, love, prior connection to the digital world, trauma, hospitalized, provider, hardworking, considerate. And then we cut to Jack. Jack, <laughs> what happened when you guys read this file? His eye, uh, uh, Jack's eyes widened. Blued and widened as he became pale, and he started murmuring to himself, saying things like, "No, that can't be." And Derek hears the murmuring. I'm like, "Hey, hey, you good?" And then last was Jason's file, correct? Yes. Jason Derek's male, age 19, strength, responsibility. Prior connection to the digital world, trauma, coma, knows plants in wilderness, legacy, role model. I oh, think it was at this point, it was around this point that uh, Jack stormed out, right? Yep. yep. And I went after him. Well, was this was this before or after Derek came to the realization that everyone had two things in common besides Jack? Yeah. Yeah. They, you guys he, had a they, little they, bit of discussion big. before he stormed out. He pointed out that everybody except Jack has trauma, and everyone is <laughs> noted as having a prior connection to the digital world. Um. After Jack stormed out. Uh, before you went after him, I think you two of you went back to Jack's file and started discovering it over in detail, trying to figure about what in it set him off. Mm hmm Yeah. I believe we went back and forth between Jack's file and Derek's file. 
Yes, you guys did a lot of going yeah. back and forth between those two files. Because there was a lot for you to discuss and unpack. <laughs> uh, yep. Derek, <laughs> want to say what concerns you about your file? Yes. You see, the two things that came to Derek's mind first was that, well, more so two categories of things. First off, the multiple visits. He doesn't know how he came there multiple times. He he just assumed that he was a normal kid with a normal life. He has no idea if he's been here or not multiple times. And the two things that also stick out to him together is is moved slash relocated and outsider. You see, the thing that bugs him is he knows he's an outsider because he didn't live. He hasn't lived in town where everyone else lives. So uh, it, it would make sense that it would be he would be called an outsider. But what bugs him is that it also says move slash relocated. He is only remembered ever living in the one city he has lived in for most of his life. So what bugs him is that he has no prior knowledge of ever moving from somewhere. So it bugs him that he has a big chunk of memory that he just doesn't know what happened. Jack, what happened when you stormed out? Well, uh, Jack uh, remembered that the others were going to the infirmary, so he uh, stormed to the infirmary where he stormed in and he uh, got Neil's attention to kind of like just gave a uh, uh, got, tried, to, tried to get a good look at Which, uh, what Say mentioned, uh, is definitely. Say, would you like to say how, uh, Neil felt? Uh, as soon as he saw Jack, we're gonna, he kind of realized that Jack at least recognized him at this point. So he wasn't sure if Jack was gonna, like, beat him up again or do something unpredictable. So he, backed into the seat more and kind of like I think he asked what if I remember correctly or what's going on that was Jason oh okay uh, which Jack just stormed out of the tower he became even more pale uh, as he walked back and started like panicking and kind of break down essentially when he got back outside, Golamon and Grizzlemon were nowhere to be seen. Uh, and you slumped against a tree with someone trying to console you, I believe. Yep. And I do want to point out, uh, I decided to, uh, on a, the uh, ice rolling thing that Google has, I decided to roll a 1d4 to see if I can eventually get a DC of 5. Uh, it took about f it took 5 <laughs> sessions for him to actually get the DC 5 and actually <laughs> be able to recognize Neil. Uh, and that was so sad. Every message was like, he didn't pass. I, Cause, so cause many like, zeros because he's got minus have been knowledge. Planning that interaction since before session 1 of mm -hmm. Like Neil and Jack's backstory, to which Cassian, eventually chasing after Jack, found him slumped against the tree. Uh, do you guys want to talk? Uh, he's you guys spent yeah. quite a while talking to each other. Yes, we did. Uh, Ad uh, had to go. Okay, so well, we're waiting for Ad to come back. Why don't you share your perspective on that conversation? Because you guys been for. Almost a half hour to an hour, I think. Of just RP. Yeah, the, um, jeez. Uh, yeah, um, so Jack was just kind of, at that point, he had calmed down, but his emotions were shot. It was just like blank slate at that point. Uh, 
had came up, started talking to him. Uh, Jack was listening. He was acknowledging he was there, but he was barely talking to him. And earlier when he was talking to Shamamon, that's when it's it was revealed that Jack was the one who attacked uh, Neil and sent him to the hospital. And he did reveal it to Cassian in here. He did. Uh, and when Cassian suggested that, you know, maybe he doesn't know or has forgotten, what was Jack's response? In hindsight, uh, Jack real- no, realized that Neil was constantly moving away and going to the opposite side of the room. While after ends, including when he stormed into the infirmary, he noticed that, um, noted, he definitely noticed Neil like flinch. Yeah. I believe your exact words were he knew. He's known this whole time. Yep. Neil has, uh, Around the end of session one or the beginning of session two, Neil realized it was who Jack was. I think. You know, after the shock happened. After the shock kind of died down. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember Neil asking Pokemon for Jack's last name to confirm. Yep. But uh, after. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone was shocked. Before. Someone did, though. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't think anyone yeah. caught on to uh, Neil asking uh, Shamamon what his yeah. last name was. Hey, we oh, don't know. Oh boy. boy. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Everybody knows, actually. Yeah, and now they are. Uh, yeah, and Jack did spend quite a while, I think, going through various events, talking about how Neil had been intentionally keeping his distance from Jack. Uh, poor DR, how when the group split up, Neil was always in the other party. Uh, hence, like, when he went with Derek while shopping, etc., etc., uh, moving to the other side of the room, all sorts of things. Uh, uh, b- before Cassian went to get find Jack, he, found, he walked into Jason and Neil and asked where uh, Jack went. I think that's from the point where he told him something was upstairs. Yes. He, he tells uh, them about the shield. Oh, yeah. yeah he tells them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, he'd already told them about the shield before when he went to find Jack the first yeah. time before he found the files. But that's when he mentions the files upstairs. Uh, so, well, uh, Cassian is out talking with Jack. Uh, the rest of the group goes up, and they find the files for themselves. Uh, Cassian, <laughs> during this conversation, uh, since Ad is away from his mic right now, I'll say, uh, allow him to elaborate more if he wants, but he talked about how he can relate to Jack, how he has done many things he's not proud of. Uh, he mentioned that ev- he's gets reminded of stuff that he can't take back or undo every time Jack fires a gun. And he says that he can relate to Jack, and if Jack needs someone, he's there for him. That I did say. Oh, you're back. I, I was I was never <laughs> away from my mic because I'm on my phone. I was just quiet because oh. I was just getting my laundry set up, so I heard well, it a bit. Don't worry. You said you couldn't talk, so that's the easiest Yeah, because way to I didn't that. want to talk while folding my laundry. <laughs> okay. Um, so if there's anything you'd like to add to that ad. Well, you essentially summed it up for me because he wanted to help get he wanted to calm down Jack because he knew he was going through a quick realization and he's aware of his redemption because he saw it on the file, so he thought it would be best to talk it out with him as someone yeah, who could possibly relate to him. Oh, that one, was about it. One thing I forgot to mention is before leaving, Ed did manage to copy the files onto his Digivice. Yes. So, as well as Derek, as he is Derek, sitting Derek there. Well. In the, Derek, yes. And as, can, as Derek is sitting in the room by himself, just contemplating, yes. like. So Cassie so also, and Derek uh, both have copies of these files that they're carrying around with them. 
Uh, also, also, um, at the end of that, uh, Cassian, Jack, and Shamamon all smoked a cigarette. Yes, yeah. <laughs> they did have a grip smoke break. No, 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 no. Shamamon and smoking, I think you meant eating. <laughs> No, he, he knew he yeah. knew it was a serious moment. He didn't eat it. This is a serious um, moment. I, 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 I saved it for no, later. No, I can tell this is a serious moment. I need to eat this with utensils instead of eat instead of with my mouth. <laughs> I, I, I don't believe Cassian also asked the Jack, "Hey, because of this, are you gonna calm down on Garrick?" And he's like, "No, what?" <laughs> no, no yeah. my exact words were his exact words were. I never said that. Yeah, Shaman's like, does this mean you're gonna stop beating up Derek? I never said that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Somebody no, needs to teach him. <laughs> no, I have and a trust me, it you. would only be an hour in in, in <laughs> game for that to be realized. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, Jack was like, no, I have a brand to keep up. I have a brand. <laughs> what brand? Oh, while they, this conversation was going on, Neil and Jason went back to the ops room uh, where they found Derek and the files. Do you guys want to talk about your experience in that room? Uh, <laughs> boy, I'll, I'll let uh, Neil go first or say. Mm -hmm. uh, so, after he found out about the files, he pulled out each of the files again, and he instantly wanted to figure out if he could delete them. He both a lot of others like reading his file because he's like, oh, everyone knows that file. And he doesn't want others finding the spire and then reading their files outside of the party. But um, he should not delete the files. Yeah. There, uh, Neil tried to panic delete his yeah. file. He could not. <laughs> Little did he know, two of them already kept it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. and then Jason read his file and saw the coma. He was very confused because he doesn't remember being in a coma. All he remembers is that the car crash. And uh, his dad was in. He saw that on the news. And. Uh, he, he tried to remember to see if there's anything about that, which he did not remember at all. Mm -hmm. And then we went to, I think we went to, I think when we got to Derek's file, we saw it multiple times in the digital world. We started questioning him. Mm -hmm. As he was sitting in the corner with the music, trying mm -hmm. to contemplate, like, what the fuck is going on? He gets interrogated by his teammates. That's a big <laughs> Like, um, they were like, what were you on the night of the I don't know, officer. There was a lot of trauma and tension going on, and people were starting to break. Yeah. And then that's when we did the shield thing. Yes. At this point, everybody had a copy of the shield. Mm -hmm. They were still gone. <laughs> and threw the abuse in the... Wait, I just, wait, I just realized something. The point of the shield protected me from the fucking, from the swirly. It was no. damage. <laughs> it blocks damage. Yeah, emotional damage. <laughs> 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 I guess once, that's a fair point. once again, Cassian inflicts the emotional damage. <laughs> Emotional <laughs> damage. <laughs> Castian specialty. That's actually his um ability. <laughs> Your spirits were never Trust part me, of you. Military oh. interrogations, baby. Military tactics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think the other thing to know of hap that happened that day was uh. Jack questioned the Garjamon about the screws. They mentioned it looks like it came from Garjamon and asked where all the other Garjamon were. Because <laughs> the tower was supposedly held many Garjamon that maintained both security and maintenance, and none of them were anywhere to be seen. 
Uh, oh boy, that was and, another thing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think that's when I think after that everything, Jason and Kumon went outside to look for Cassie yes. and Jack. Yes, uh, Jason and Kumon went. Them. Eventually, they found them. Uh, the three of them spent some time like around the tower for things of interest and didn't find anything. And after that, uh, the group basically, even though it was mid-afternoon at this point, uh, <laughs> everybody started, everybody's like spent the rest of the day like with some time to themselves in their own ways, contemplating the events of what for them was the past three days and especially the last few hours. <laughs> And uh, they needed a break. They were traumatized. And they all eventually went to bed. <laughs> Derek, Derek, you, you just see Derek's room. Like, you open the door, there's just bottles of beer all over the floor. So, I remember all that. So, I would like to point something out. Yeah. I, was not part of the, I was not part of this decision. The others decided to use their all. The two HP chips and the DP disc they just found, and then we immediately wrong the rest of the team. Well, I, I didn't know we were going to do that. Yes. Yeah. There were, th there were two HP discs know. and a DP disc recovered <laughs> that they found in the uh, they medic both board that won't. were immediately used. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. yeah, that's right. Uh, that's both of the one. HP plus one discs were actually not ones yet. <laughs> Yeah, and Derek was like, Derek was there, so why are you using that? We're going to Long Rex. And as he gets in those, he just Derek like, wasn't Ooh. even in the room at this point. Derek doesn't even know about that. Derek is so traumatized, he starts breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> yeah, Derek, this was while Derek was still upstairs. Derek doesn't even know they're found or used. They just found uh, recovery items and immediately used them because people were very beat up after that last fight. No, no, I think I yeah. think they said something as we were at the shop and I, Derek was like, You found some and used them immediately? So, I mean, mind mm -hmm. if we transition over to the next day? Because yes. The greatest so, news we've ever heard came to light. <laughs> there were running yes. showers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, finally, Jason and Neil slept in the medic ward, where, well, Jack, Cassian, and Derek slept in the living quarters on the first floor. Uh, and the three boys on the first floor, after getting up early, went to the restroom and realized that when the tower was turned back on, so was the water. And there were active running showers and baths available for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Monty mm -hmm. Python, finding the holy grail. Jack had to be good. Had, Jack had to be yeah. there for a good, like, at least one, two hours. Because I mentioned that he ro woke up really mm -hmm. early. Yes. Uh, before the other, <laughs> so he was in there for a long time. Jack was the first to drink in the showers, Why? and when Jack came out of the showers in a towel, he was wrinkled. He was wrinkly. <laughs> Keep in mind, also, is everyone woke up due to hearing the sound going war? I would assume you didn't role play this out. Um, Yazimon went down to hear what it was. Notice the sound of running water. Cassian opens the door, sees Gazimon, grabs him by the top of the head, drags him in as Gazimon screams for his life. <laughs> Cassian did force Gazimon to take a bath to Gazimon's horror and immediately was... decided trying to roll in the dirt afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Gazimon yep. acts like a dog when it comes to that. Uh, he was not happy. He does. I... He stopped for, uh, he and, uh, that water was nasty after he got out. <laughs> now, Neil and Jason eventually came downstairs to check in with the others, and they heard the running water. Uh, Neil, upon realizing that Jack was in the showers and such, uh, went and took, him and Al Rahman took their baths in the women's facilities, and... Boys, what happened when Jack came out of the shower? Well, hold on, before that... Bubbles! Well, 
Oh yeah, and, and oh yeah, and and, and, and our mom did and love him some bubbles. Let me tell you, he loves and, his I bubbles. I believe this was also established where Kunamon doesn't take like normal baths or showers. He he like a chinchilla likes to go into a pile of dirt and just roll around in it. Jason <laughs> learned. Jason learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. They they decided that Kunamon um needs to shower only. Uh when Kunamon got into the bath, uh some people got shocked. Um Kunamon sort of mm -hmm. turned in the bathtub. <laughs> and then started to get skid her away. However, uh, as this was going on, Jack, you got out of the shower. What's the first thing that happened when you came out of the shower in a towel? Well, the, first thing, the first thing that happened was actually that he, he noticed the that every uh, everyone was essentially like helping their uh, Digimon, their adorable Digimon, uh, take as and such. Uh, however, looked at uh, Shamamad and realized that he's just too human looking, so he just throws a shampoo bottle and a towel at him to tell him to clean himself. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens next? What happens next? Derek, is that Derek what happens next was probably the greatest moment in the series so far. <laughs> what happened next is that yeah. Derek, uh, he first he called uh, Cassian a slut as he was trying to turn on to uh, put on his uh, shirt because uh, of course he stepped out of the shower. Uh, and once again, uh, Jack stepped out of the shower with a towel wrapped around him. And once again, Derek calls him, uh, calls Marcus. So, um, so, so when you piss off the two most combat-oriented men in the room, it's sorry to interrupt, Ed, they each mm -hmm. wrap an arm around Derek's shoulder like the best friends they are as Jack muttered a few simple words. Have you heard of a swirly? And in the and we cut away to Neil and Al Raumon playing with bubbles as behind the walls you heard. <laughs> in Derek, in Derek, Neil refused to leave that room. In Derek, you stayed in the bath for a long time after that. Jason just walked in, just back away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In Derek's them. own words, in Derek's own words, to pass him, then to Jack, then as he was being dragged, put on a shirt, you slut. To Jack, put on, a, put on some pants, you slut. And then as he was being dragged, Jack touched, I it got and, bad enough. Well, and, and don't up. worry, Jack and Cassian were enough to make sure the toilet was clean before giving the swirly. They're not <laughs> that evil. <laughs> it also uh, got so from here enough that Black Agumon <laughs> spent ETP to fire off arc lightning at them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Black Agumon tried helping him while he tried to attack Jack with you. lightning, but that didn't work. <laughs> Fortunately, Jack what? managed to dodge the nat one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the very hard to dodge. Oh. There were 11 nat ones this session. I went back and counted before this yep. call. <laughs> and none of them were from me, chat. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we just have to believe him. Totally. <laughs> you can open, wow. I, Silver, you can literally open up the logs. I can. Oh, well, it is <laughs> now canon. Apparently, Shamamon ate, uh, ate the bottle of shampoo. <laughs> oh, God damn it! Amazing. <laughs> camo, camo just message and uh, apparently it's canon now that one of the shampoo balls are gone because Jamal Mon ate it. Mm, to be fair, I don't expect it. anything oh, else from no, Jamal no, no. no, I I like to also imagine like as as like Derek was trying to escape their grasp, like trying to escape like get out of here. He's being dragged back just like no no. Wait, no, wait, who was being dragged afterwards? 
I know someone else was being dragged. Was it Jason being dragged? No. No. no Jason no. was out of this. This was just you. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, poor, poor. Derek is the only one who got the swirly treatment and he held a grudge for the rest of the session. Yep. <laughs> He's like, no, nope, I'm staying away from you, fucks. I, I, I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to survive this if they uh, stay near you two. Someone I'll, needs to teach you and you're not learning. Be fine. Someone, people need to teach <laughs> you, you're not learning. This is your fault. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna call the two <laughs> combat oriented men sluts. Then put on some clothes. It was a fucking shower. What do you expect? <laughs> I don't like being funny. You never showered with the boys? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll start showering with the Digi Boys. Oh no. What is this? A phone no. advertisement for soap? What the hell is this? No, no, it's an advertisement for our only fan. To be oh, fair, no. I wish I could cut that, but I don't have the power to do so. Uh, such a yeah, thing does not adver exist. Advertisement oh. ends with uh, the warning sign with do not soap as Jack is. <laughs> Bottle from Shampoo. You think yes. I'm gonna die? Tastes like fruit. That yeah, was no. a lie. To be fair, if you expect Shaman <laughs> anything else from Shaman, literally our running joke in the group is Shaman, what happened to blank? Cuts away to Shaman burping or eating. You no, know, I didn't. You know, it reminds me of the scene from uh, I forgot that that one Christmas movie where it's like you you wash your mouth out with a bar of soap and Shaman just like I bet. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> just, a, just a reminder to the viewers, I had nothing to do with Shamamon eating everything. That was camo and then Ad saying, please tell me he eats it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, this, That's how it this, this, this episode is sponsored by Dr. Squat. <laughs> It is. <laughs> so after the bats on antics, the group finally met up and talked about what they wanted to do going forward. Um, they decided... <laughs> Derek, feeling violated, reluctantly joined up with everyone else. Uh, <laughs> and... I just changed the trauma more. And don't forget, Cassian also washed up uh, Derek's face. Afterwards, so at least it was clean. Yes, he did <laughs> take a ra soapy rag and help Derek clean his face. Yeah. Afterwards. <laughs> yeah, Lux, uh, look, look, you'll get over it. He, like, so yeah, he just like scrubs the hair. It's like Jesus, you're greasy as shit. <laughs> <laughs> you put lavender in my mouth. Then, 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 then don't I, open your mouth. I'm scrubbing. I'm scrubbing your face, bro. I thought it was another swirly. I was scared. So, as the group decided what they wanted to do going forward, uh, they decided that they needed to travel north and uh, bring the next two towers online. They spent some time debating what tower they wanted to go to next. Uh wanted the cold. Jack and Derek voted for the you cold. Voted Everyone for else desert. voted for the uh, desert. So, so by by uh, by rules of democracy, they were going to sad land. Yes, <laughs> the group decided <laughs> that, that their next destination was going to be the band with the desert. Jason's I reason. They were sorry. I do want to point out uh, it was a unanimous vote, but me and Derek actually voted for the snow area. Uh, Jason's reason for the desert, mm -hmm. they were more equipped for it. Not silly. Also, uh, the Neil faded said words were like said, yes, let's go to the shittier option first. And the group said, watch, we'll do yeah. this. And the other option will turn out to be shittier. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my so, fault if it is. Yeah. It's they always failing. failing. They too, in oh preparation. God, a polar bear. <laughs> so... In preparation oh God, for Apple moving on. Yeah. yeah, in preparation for moving back on, they, to decided, Farmville. they go back to Farmville and uh, do they try to do shopping. Well, they did do shopping. They got yeah. cloaks and shit. Yeah, the crew. 
went shopping. And, and two uh, bandages. Two bandages. They bought some more bandages. Uh, some cloaks, some goggles, some canteens. Um, Derek has used most of his money. Is there anything else? You, and some meat. Uh, is there anything else you guys bought? I uh, uh, bought ropes for everything like was mentioned, but I also bought one for Shama. Yeah. Uh, so now he looks a bit like a Jawa mm-hmm. uh, as the <laughs> rogue is dragon behind him. Yes. Uh, while the group was shopping, Cassian went back to check in on the farm. Uh, where he ran into Tanmon again, who was surprised to see him, and they kind of had a little bit of a goodbye moment. Lalamon showed up, and he had to deal with that one. Uh, Lalamon is always a uh, favorite to run into, right, guys? No comment. Cassian, so Cassian, nice. Cassian had to drag Gazimon away as he was flicking off the uh, Lala. <laughs> <laughs> And afterwards, uh, love sisters. Cassian talked with Budmon. Uh, do you want to describe that interaction, Cassian? Uh, yeah. Um, so Budmon, being a little skittish, whis- goes into whisper. They have a they have a little uh, feely feely for Tanamon. Big feely feelings. So, one thing I didn't have in my uh, D&D bingo list, but I had to check it off anyway, was Cassian giving relationship advice to a Digimon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... One of the first things Cassian said is, be a natural, don't try to show off by eating the hottest meat or anything. So immediately you see Bud Bon pull out like a notepad and start scratching something off. <laughs> <laughs> but still he 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 gave them support you know saying if i come back you know tell me how it went feel feel confident and then uh said their goodbyes mm-hmm. uh the, that was when the group went to vegemon's tower to purchase some wholesale no meat. no yeah, jack no, into cassie no, stayed by uh but no, stayed by the no, no, first, wait, before first. they went to yoko Mons. Back to uh, try to get some meals for the road, which effectively turned out they effectively went to a restaurant to try to stock up for food on the road. Realize that that isn't how things work. You don't just go to a restaurant and order like 25 meals. So uh, they went to Vegemon for some negotiations. We like your entire stock. There is something that I would like to add about the shops. Go ahead. As the ro- mm-hmm. as the uh, human rogue of the group, Silver keeps fucking blue balling me by making the shops uh, <laughs> a way where I can't get the I fucking heard items. shops designed before you designed your character, okay? Not every shop will be like this. But in the, the village of huts, the shops aren't exactly places you walk into. Oh, they were talking to, uh, uh, uh what's his name again? Muchumon? Muchumon? Yeah. yeah. And no, Muchumon. Well, they were talking to Muchumon and it was uh, distracted by them. I was actually contemplating to go around the back, see if I could finally, for the first time this entire session, use, his, use Jack's lockpick set to try and quietly lockpick his way in and then just reach for something. <laughs> but I decided not to. Now, the fun no, thing is, stop. while discussing with Muchamon, the group did hear about a city in the desert called Uldada. And started asking how far away that was. They then negotiated with Vegemon for some meat. They once again said goodbye to Vegemon and Florimon, and they hit the road. Uh, Wait, wasn't, wasn't this where uh, Derek was about the sun thing? The sun thing? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We, we were trying to determine which thing the sun sets. Oh, yes. And the group was, was, we were trying to figure out where north, west, and east, north, south, west, and east were. Yes, they were asking, trying to gauge ways to trek north. And uh, the group spent some time trying to figure it out, and Jason realized, after some checks, that... 
the sun sets in different locations and rises to different ones each time. Yeah, so I the sun sun staring at the sun for three and a half minutes. Yes, he's fine. <laughs> yes, guys, I'm looking at he it. Doesn't Nothing's worry happening. about the glaucoma. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about him. He's fine after spending ten minutes staring directly into the sun. Uh, <laughs> no, it does not. It did not, it did not him. give him superpowers. <laughs> The only superpower I got got was Blondoma. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, the group did realize that if, after reflecting on their last several days here, the sun has been rising and setting in different locations every day. Uh, at this point, they decided on their travel plans. They decided rather than cutting through uh, to the desert in a straight path towards the tower, they wanted to head north to the places where the three areas meet first, then head over. Um, the, uh, cause they were all curious about this section. Um, now they began their travels north. Um, and there was a bit of awkwardness with Neil staying on the other <laughs> side of the group. And everybody now, both being aware of it, which they weren't necessarily aware of before, and knowing why. I um, think Derek is the only one. I think I think Derek and Jason aren't aware of it. No, Derek is. Well, I feel like Derek. No, are they aware was, of, what, of of what specifically happened? No, Jason isn't. No, but correct. no, but Derek was there, and he stopped. Well, no, not both. Well, I feel like yes. you two. Yeah, you and Jason would have. Jason would have saw like yeah, a weird yeah, interaction. Just, no, no, I'm saying, I know you can visually see it, but they don't know the reason why. Yeah, no, if well, Neil, yeah, we, yeah, if Neil didn't say anything, Jason and Derek wouldn't know about uh, their, Neil and Jack's backstory, would they? Mm-hmm. No, but Derek was with Neil because he, he is kind of pissed off with the, of the other two. Yeah. <laughs> Derek had his own reasons for joining Neil on the other side of the group. Yeah. I wonder what that could be. Yeah, I don't know. It's harassment. But the group weird. kept traveling north for most of the day. Hmm. Uh, and eventually, they spotted some smoke in the distance. Calcium, for the first time, started using his binoculars. <laughs> look, I'm poor Gore. <laughs> I'm dying. I know what's going on. <laughs> I'm dying what's coming up. We all know what's coming up, and we should like, <laughs> say that. Uh, yeah. So, so I, let's just skip to it, because the binoculars <laughs> didn't help. He rolled what's very it? poorly on his DC7 chat to see what's ahead. The group discussed what could be causing the smoke. And they thought, you know, it's white smoke. So maybe instead of like a forest fire, it's a factory or something. So there was a DC-11 track for people to try to see if they could smell something in the smoke to get an idea of what's the hat. Um, Jason, what did you roll on this track? I don't know. Was it in like the 50s? It was a 31. No, it a 31. was a 31. 31, yes. He rolled a 31 on his DC 10. I scrolled back up to it for people who wish to see. He rolled a 10, a 10, and a 9, followed by his plus he was modifier. Made, he rolled so high that if he was sniffing at a table, he'd be able to tell what wood it was made from, where it was made from, how it was made, what what was lacquered with it. He, he rolled he so will be well. Able to tell the exact dimensions. He, he got enough of a description of what he smelled that even being without being told what this was, Jason was able to guess what was ahead. <laughs> As the group grew closer, they realized that Jason's predictions were indeed correct, as it was not smoke, but steam. As they came across a, hot spring. a region of hot springs. 
immediately realizing because they had worked out, they'd copied the maps from the control spire on their Digimon system, they could see their location on the map. They realized that they were, in fact, right next to the triple point. So they immediately rushed past the hot springs to check this. Wait, no, first. No, first, they found was later. That's all the water. Oh, yeah. Mm. Derek. Derek immediately decided to test the water. So he tested the water that was in the farthest pools from the main source and found it to be very comfortably warm. His next decision was he immediately went to the source pools to plunge his hand straight into them. Mm -hmm. Smartest move. He rolled hey, a one hey, on his hey. check and this got is... burned by the steam before he could make contact with the water. Yeah, this is yeah, this is big brain time. <laughs> this is big brain. There was there, 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 there was a neurotransmission there, and I don't think the right cells got it. Derek <laughs> is an idiot, not stupid. I want to point out, I did threaten uh, Derek. I before we started this recording, I did threaten uh, Ren. I would give him a swirly in the hottest uh, pool, <laughs> in hot spring pool, <laughs> if he wouldn't shut up. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Now, I did just realize before we get to the triple point, there is one very important thing that I forgot to mention earlier in this session video. Mm -hmm. When the group was back in the tower looking over the logs, uh, each log gave a location for where the program had been activated from. Mm. And when looking at the DigiDistant protocol, it seemed to show up not coming from a region within mainframe, but a separate area in the digital world that they could not bring up on the map to the limited functions with only having one tower online. The area where the DigiDestin protocol was activated by Sentinel was a region known as the Blockchain Islands. To which the group made various inferences on what they thought that was. But anyway, as back to the present, the group immediately began running over themselves to check up where the three areas of mainframe met. And what they saw was a sight that kind of blew their minds. Uh, looking ahead of them, to the left was the desert, and to the right was a tundra. And... Was Neil the first one to check it out? Was there Derek? I forget which yep. one. Yeah, I Neil immediately Derek. stood between. Derek. Derek shoved his hand in the soap. Was it? Yeah. No, yeah, Neil was Derek first. Yeah. Neil was first. Oh. All right. So, uh, Neil, uh, do you want to go ahead and explain your interaction? Um. He immediately stepped in between the desert and the snow and basically T-pose to see the temperature. And what the group learned is that there was a invisible threshold on the ground where the forest immediately turned into desert and immediately turned into tundra. And as Neil's arms crossed those lines, his left hand felt a sweltering increase in temperature, and his right hand had an immediate drop in temperature. Well, he doesn't know the exact temperatures, the left was very hot, and the right was definitely below freezing. And while I we're realized. on the subject of... Yeah, yeah go on. Yeah. I was, was going to let you finish. Basically his first reckless move since getting there. Yeah, and so just... I'm going to do a little reenactment of Al Raumont's experience with this. I'm going to try the <laughs> desert. Uh, I don't like it. I'm going to go into the tundra. Uh, I don't like it either. <laughs> <laughs> so what? 
each Digimon one by one, tested out how they liked both areas, and were asked the DM, hey, what's it like for this Digimon? Uh, <laughs> some hated both. Uh, Gazimon handled the cold a little bit better than the desert. Uh, Agumon handled the desert better than the cold. The others just were both were uncomfortable. Samomon was relatively okay-ish in both as much as a human would be. Um, Derek shoved his burnt hand into the snow. Uh, Kunamon tried making a snow angel that turned into more of a snow eldritch horror. Snow um, and Derek decided to join him. Like, yeah, that's a good idea, Lil Cop. I didn't get to take. I didn't get to do this, but uh, Jason took a picture of it, and he. he yes. <laughs> I I would like to uh, point out that uh, Gazimon tried digging a hole in the sand, but the sand kept falling in on itself because you know it's sand, and a single tear was shed across. Uh, <laughs> 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 After it's, it's messing Kunamon around, just, and, oh, go ahead if you want to say anything. I feel like Kudamon probably would have went into the desert and been like, eh, eh, this is alright, then decided to just dig into the dirt. It's like, I am now an ant, I am now one with the sand. And then decided to just dig underground. <laughs> like the worm from Dune. Oh, God. Yes. After the group spent a lot of time playing with this weird phenomena of having a threshold between biomes that they could play with and testing out different areas. Uh, I'm honestly surprised you guys didn't have a snowball fight. Um, honestly, yeah. No, Derek would have been bullied and buried. Derek would have been bullied and buried. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, absolutely. There might be time for that next session. But, uh, <laughs> decided... Sand ball fly, they just throw <laughs> chunks of sand at each other. <laughs> the group decided that since it was Pocket getting sand. later in the day, the hot springs would make a much better place to make camp than the desert. So the group just started looking around and found a refrigerator full of eggs. Um, Eric grabbed an egg and decided, like, this is, we're going to part oil. Like actual eggs, like a chicken eggs. Yes, they found a refrigerator <laughs> un that was not but, plugged in, but was still running. That was full of chicken but every eggs. Everyone was like, wait, hold on, that could be Digimon eggs. Then Derek decided, you know what? Fine. Throws the egg onto the ground. Mm. And I was like, why'd you do that? I'm like, it's a normal egg. And then that's when we got confirmation from Kunamon. <laughs> yeah, that they were not Digi eggs. Uh, we then got a description of what Digimon eggs do, which reminds me, there was one other piece of information they gleaned from Garchimon, that each region of the Digital World has its own primary village where data, where Digimon return to eggs, uh, and that the primary village for Mainframe was located up in the Recycle Mountains. Um, mm -hmm. The group... This is roughly where we ended the session. Derek did toss an egg to hard boil it, and it kind of sank to the bottom of the pool. And that's when Jason got the idea to make a basket. Uh, the and we kind of stopped Derek from diving into the pool to try to dig the egg out. <laughs> no, no, wait, no, he, no, he threw an egg into, like, onto the ground. You guys saw uh, Derek threw it into the thing. No, like, no, as it broke. you very clearly said, hey, I'm going to hard boil this and toss yeah. it into the pool of hot water. <laughs> and I it will sank. point out, Jack would not have stopped Derek. Derek needs to alert eventually to stop doing some yeah. shit. Jack is supposed to be the dumb one, yet somehow Rain keeps beating him. <laughs> Why? Because this character is supposed to be me. I will do this stupid shit. Oh... Listen, that's not something to brag about, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yes. But yes, that is where we ended the session with the group, deciding that this is where they wanted to settle down and make camp for the night. 
And that yep. seemed like a natural stopping place. We're getting, it was like a quarter till midnight for us, which, and yeah, that's where we ended the session. Uh, yeah. Do you guys have any closing thoughts before we end up this recording? Um, uh, meat pizza is very good. You should try it. <laughs> oh my God. Trauma. Uh, deep dish. Uh, the deep dish is better. Shout oh, out I to Tango Friend for, for our. Uh, I feel like that can't be understated. Yeah. Uh, Camo, uh, you go I, first. I do have a question. Uh, do we know when next session might be? Uh, I know. I, I, guess I know, I know next this week. weekend. I think is off because. Of yeah. Season. Yeah. But That's... I think I think the following weekend might be fine. Yeah, I know Shay is traveling this weekend. Yay. Um, have fun. So, Yay, next week. Yeah, hope you have fun. But, uh, I want to point out, uh, Jack is the only one without any actual trauma, but he is the <laughs> only one that gave someone else their trauma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, well, 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 well we, we, we still need to talk about the... Uh, what? Jack might be acquiring trauma from his past actions. He's acquiring trauma, but he not thing. exactly has uh, trauma right now. So, Ooh. off topic, because I've already said this in other servers, I'm, without, I'm not going to reveal it, but say reveal to me the champion, and <laughs> holy <laughs> shit, I'm going to have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> I am very Holy excited to see what you do with it. I'm not gonna lie, I was honestly hoping that Al Raumon would be the first to ditch evolve. Honestly, that's <laughs> you're about so to see funny. why in case that happens, but I don't want but I was to look and I if it happens soon, great. That means I win the bet. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I was legit possible. hoping that Al Raman would be the first to ditch evolve. And uh, I can't, that I hasn't can't happened say the yet. exact I can't point I can't point it out because it'll give me away, but I'll point it out when, when we did point it when I did evolve. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure we will have many things to point out when it happens. <laughs> so yeah, like, just yeah, like dying. coincidence, the others I'm gonna make intentional. <laughs> there oh, are, I, also, I will I say also... there have been all as the DM, all I will say, it has been happened for multiple people that the person who's playing their partner does not know who their future digivolutions are, but there have been many situations that have been set up perfectly without knowing <laughs> for multiple people. Yep. Uh, I, I, I think I can safely say I have changed the line for Kuru on small bit. Yep. That is something that Jason, that uh, Kamo did talk to me about behind the scenes, some tweaks in some of Kunamon's future evolutions. I will not know until it happens. <laughs> but I do know what, I do know the voice for the next evolution, though. Kamo has given me that much. <laughs> okay. And with that, we would like to thank anybody who is... As always, anybody who is enjoying our story, we're just a group of folks enjoying our home game. If you are coming along with us, we just appreciate you coming along and hope you're having as much fun as we are. And if you're, we once again apologize that we weren't able to share this mod with you. We really wish we could. And if you're watching this weird little behind the scenes episodes, we just like to thank you for coming along as well. Mm -hmm. They're keeping us yeah. in the basement! They're keeping us in the basement! Help me! <laughs> Don't let them know! They're gonna swirly me again! Like and subscribe! Silver this! Like all of us! <laughs>